All right, this is Pep Talk. Let me sing it. I need a pep talk. Pep talk. I need a pep talk. Pep talk. There it is. You always know when I have my daughter's phone because you don't hear the little jingle in the beginning. So I have to do it live for you. All right, this is Yadita Span. And I am your Pep Talk podcast host. And I'm coming on today to speak with you for a few moments about this topic. Don't give up. I get it. Believe me, I do. A lot of people are facing challenges they thought they would never ever face in their entire lives. Uh, People have had loved ones and friends who have transitioned and this thing has been very difficult. The extroverts are going through it, some of them. The introverts uh, are kind of like, I'm in my element, but it doesn't mean that they don't feel a bit uneasy perhaps about what's going on. And so, I'm here to talk to you. I went on my uh, Facebook page last night, and I was talking to the people. I like to go on later, like sometimes around 10, 11 um, at night. And the reason for that is because when people are going through difficulties, nine times out of 10, one of two things um, can happen. Either they're sleeping a whole lot more than usual, or they're sleeping a whole lot less. And so the ones who are sleeping a whole lot less are usually up at that hour. They're thinking, their minds are going, trying to figure things out, wondering why, why, what. Um, And so that's a good time, I feel, to go on and to talk to them and to let them know that they're not alone, first of all. To let you know you're not alone, first of all. And to just talk to people and say, hey, yes, it does get tough sometimes but we still cannot give up. I was actually speaking about um, chapter four from my book, Don't Give Up. Um, It's on Amazon if you didn't get your copy. Uh, There are some reviews that are up and I also have um, just if you want to get a copy and you want um, a personal message written inside on the inside cover for you, just reach out to me um, at www yadidaspan.com you can um, send an email to hello at yadidaspan.com and um, let me know if you want a copy a couple of copies people need to know that they must not give up and it's a book of encouragement that was written specifically for you you and also you you and them (laughs) so in this chapter chapter four I was speaking about this um caterpillar and some of you have heard me read from this particular chapter before it's one of the chapters that I love Um, go on the Facebook page Adidas Span you should see me there I had a uh, my don't give up shirt on because it's a message that needs to be magnified in the earth at this time so many videos are coming into our messenger box if you have Facebook and different things like that. And sometimes it can just feel overwhelming. I kind of stop looking at some of the videos that I'm receiving. It's just a lot, especially when you have other things that you need to do. But this to me is very important. It's important for me to come on to encourage. It's important for me to come on and to motivate I don't know about you. Have you ever looked like on social media, you were facing something and you went and you looked and, you know, you put in heartbroken or or, or sickness or caregiver or, um, I don't know, you were searching for an answer. You were searching for some hope. You were searching to see that you were not the only one and who else had gone through this. Well, that's why I like to do this. Um, I also know that part of my gift is to be an encourager. And I think that's why I get fought. Sometimes you'll get fought in the area that 
the thing that you're supposed to do for God is where you'll be fought the hardest. So I get fought sometimes in areas where um, things will happen. And the one thing that will be is just like, okay, now just be quiet. Shut up. Don't use your voice. You know, look at what just happened. <laughs> and it's like, then I just feel the push. Go on. Go in and carriage. Go on and do it. And so I'm here. So here's this caterpillar in the book. And the caterpillar is on a journey and it doesn't know where it's going. It just knows that it has to move. It has to go. And it's going. And as it goes, it encounters some people along the way. And these people see this caterpillar. And instead of being kind and, oh, look, look at that caterpillar. They instead decide that they want to disrupt the caterpillar's journey. And they find a twig. And without permission and without regard... They take that quick that twig and they put it underneath the caterpillar and they pick it up and they look at it and they're like, ew, ew, it's so nasty, it's so ugly, ew, yuck, right? And so they're, you know, swinging the twig around and the caterpillar's holding on for dear life. It's wrapped its body as tightly as it possibly can around this twig because it doesn't want to fall off from such a great distance. You ever have that happen? You're on a way somewhere and someone just picks up your your dreams, your hopes, your your the things that you believe for for your future. Whether it was a perfect marriage or you know, children who listen all the time or um you being in a a different space financially where things were going well and then all of a sudden something happens and either someone or a situation takes those dreams and just flings them and they plummet and they fall to the ground temporarily I always say temporarily that's a big word for me it's temporary But that's what happens to this caterpillar. And now they fling it on the ground. They're tired of it. And this caterpillar is kind of like, now it's hurt. Like it didn't start off that way. The people did that. It hurt the caterpillar. They hurt us. They hurt you. They hurt me. But in spite of that, we have to continue on. We've got to get back on the path. Regardless of what's happening around us. Regardless of who loves and who doesn't, we still have a path to stay on. And so the caterpillar goes back on this path and now it's like it's moving differently because it's hurt. Yesterday I was speaking about um, a Phoebusheth from the Bible who um, became lame after a fall. And sometimes we feel lame after a fall too. But he doesn't recognize that he is valued by the king. The king is looking for him. And we are valued by God. And I believe he looks like for us like he did Adam and Eve in the garden when they felt they had done wrong. They sinned. They felt they sinned so badly that we've got to cover ourselves and hide from God. And God is looking for them because he created them for a relationship with him like he did with us. So don't hide. If you made a mistake, ask his forgiveness, repent and get back on the path that he has chosen for you. And so now it's going and it it, it realizes that it needs to make a change in something. And so now it goes and, you know, it finds this humongous milkweed and it starts to kind of go through this process where it's wrapping itself. It's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning, it's wrapping, it's wrapping, and it's getting inside of this chrysalis. And now that it's in the chrysalis, it's so happy. I'm in here. Nobody can get to me. Thank goodness. Finally, I'm away from the outer elements that tried to harm me. But while it's in there, it realizes that it cannot get out. But neither, you know, no one can get in. Let me put it that way. But neither can it get out. Have you taken time to isolate yourself? I'm tired of being hurt. Tired of being wounded. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of people picking on me. I'm tired of people not seeing my worth. I have a question for you. Do you see your worth? It's important that you do. Let me tell you why. 
because in order for us to really love and to live this life um, from a better place, we have to learn the importance of loving for ourselves now. I'm not talking about loving ourselves more than we love God. I'm not talking about arrogance or pride. I'm not talking about saying I'm better than someone else, which a lot of people tend to do. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying we've got to love ourselves because when we start to love ourselves, there are certain things that we will not tolerate as much. We will learn to stand up for ourselves and sometimes you won't be able to stand up you'll want to talk but your mouth is going to be like Whoop. like don't you say that don't you do that I think that's that's the glue and the grace and the mercy of God that constrains us don't you fight I've got this I know you you've got to know that God knows you even when people don't and you've got to know you not from a space of where we are now, where things are so, so different. From a space of what God says about you. How he knows you, how he loves you. And yes, God can love you even when the world seems like it's in utter chaos. You've got to find the secret place with God, a place of safety. You've got to take your mind and your thoughts and Turn them over to him and ask God to give you peace in the midst of the storm. And he can. So learn to love yourself. Learn to not call yourself names and look at yourself like you're awful. I'm bad. I'm terrible. I'm I'm looking at myself in a bad light. Don't do that. Look at yourself differently. Look at it. That's if you're not. If you are, good. But if you're not, take that up to another level. And and look at what does God say about his people. Look at the love that he has for you. And I know where we're in, right? We have to stay certain distance away from people. But that never means that we have to like isolate our minds. Nobody knows what I'm going through. It feels like that sometimes, right? People just don't get it. People just, they're, they're, they're not nice, they're mean, or whatever. They're not taking time to understand or listen to me. Well, God does listen. Talk to him, like just like I'm talking to you. Just like you would sit and talk to a friend, like a, a father, talk to him. Tell him about how you feel. Ask him to help take the pain away. Ask him to help you find out what to do next. Pray for wisdom. Pray for guidance from God, not guidance from other things, other sources that are not godly, that'll trip you up. You don't want to do that. So Caterpillar's in there, and it starts to feel something happening to itself, and that's when it's starting to go through that metamorphosis and then the caterpillar actually goes through a point of death. Um, we do too and it's not like a physical death. It's like where it seems like everything that we thought gets broken down so that we can trust and rely on God even more. And so it goes through that period of time and while it's in there and it's not feeling very good at all at this point, And it's wondering, why was I even created? Why was I even born? Is there nothing better than this? I feel horrible inside. This is what the caterpillar is going through. And so something happens, something wonderful, something marvelous starts to happen for this caterpillar. I've given you enough. I will not give the spoiler alert. (laughs) But there's so much more to this story inside of that book. I mean... We go through that sometimes where we feel like, how are we going to make it through? Think about the worst thing that you've ever been through. Think about that thing that happened years ago that you were like, I'm not going to make it. I can't, I can't take this. This is terrible. Think about the thing that you made it through just yesterday. Or the thing that you're making it through now. That thing, 
Think about that. Realize that you made it through. You did. Even when you thought you couldn't. You made it through and you're still here. And so, I know sometimes it seems like it's the worst thing ever. Believe me, I do. But we've got to We've got to put our minds in a different space. That's the reason why I'm a faith coach. I'm an optimistic coach. I'm a, that's why. Because if we don't have hope and if we don't have faith, then I really don't see how we can make it. Our thoughts have to not be in a space where we're just focusing on what the situation and the problem is. And there is a period of time when we do. We have to look at it. We have to face it. We face it. We don't fake it. We don't act like it doesn't hurt, like it doesn't exist. We don't do that. We face it. We look at it. We acknowledge it. We say it hurts. That shows how we're real. We have emotions. We cry sometimes. There's nothing wrong with crying. We need to do that. We need to release the stress, the pain, the anguish. Nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean, oh, you're so weak, you're crying. Listen, who said there was something wrong with being weak anyway? When I'm weak, then God is strong, right? It's true. So you face that thing. And then you you, you start to give it, you start to invite God in. You start to give it, talk about it. You talk about your emotions. You start to think about different strategies, different ways. You pray about strategies. God, what can I do to get out of this situation or to go through it? Because processes, you just don't get out. You go through them. Going through them does something for you. It does something for me. Going through them allows us to see ourselves It allows us to look at God. It allows us to realize that there are some things that may even need to be changed in our way of thinking or even in the way that we're doing things or even in how we feel about ourselves and even how we feel about others. Going through sometimes will bring up some things inside of us and may cause some bitterness to try to spike up. So we deal with that. Because we said, well, why do I have to go through this? Why me? We get there too. And then we realize, like like I say, well, why not me? Going through for me has, it has, it has humbled me. And there's nothing wrong with that. It has given me great empathy for other people. Because if I had not gone through those situations, it would be more difficult for me to say, well, you know, I I can, I can feel that pain that you, I, I can feel it because I've experienced hurt and pain too. Going through for me helps me to rely and depend on God instead of just my own strength. There are some things you will go through that your own strength is not gonna cut it. Going through for me has shown me The power of not giving up is essential in order to make it. It's a must. Changing that mindset, the mindset that says it's going to stay like this, you're going to be like this, you're you're nothing. Going through for me, it will give you a fight. It will put this something inside of you that says if I don't fight, I'm going to lose it all. And you cannot lose it all. And so you must fight. You must get up. You must dust yourself off. You must stand up. Even if you're on a leg that's limping. Even if your standing up is not physical, but it's from the inside because you've been cowering down and you've been succumbing to the things and the lies of the enemy. Things that people have said about you. Things that you've said about yourself that God didn't say. Break that partnership with the lies. The things that say you won't make it, that you're no good. Break it. Break it. Don't accept that. Break the partnership with that. You will make it. You've got to say something 
You've got to talk differently. You've got to see yourself coming out of a situation before you ever get out of it. You have to find yourself. You have to see yourself trying to come up with resources. All right, that was good for back then. This is a new day. Let's not keep trying to look for the old. The old is gone. Yesterday is not here anymore. Now we're in today, looking for our future. So in today, what do I need to do today to change my life for the better? First of all, I've got to confront whatever it is that I'm dealing with. Some people have vices. You're struggling with, and you're drinking too much and you know darn well you are. You're smoking too much and you know darn well you are. And you're hurting yourself. That's a temporary band-aid. It's not helping you. you out there having sex with a person you're not married with. That's going to hurt you in the long run. Close your legs. Zip up your fly. And go to God. That's not going to help you. You need real love in this season. Sex is not real love. Sex is overrated as a matter of fact. A couple of moments of pleasure. If I could call it moments, right? A moment, a couple of seconds, three seconds. I don't know. Whatever it is. For you to just... To give your goods away to somebody who doesn't even really love you. You don't need to do that. You're special. You don't need to give away your cookies. And we're grown-ups, so let's not act like we don't know what we're talking about. Don't do that. God loves you. He doesn't want you to just give your body away. I mean, he created your body because of love. He knew you before you were born. Don't belittle who you are because you're feeling weak and vulnerable. Take that vulnerability and give it to God. Now, I normally don't even talk like that. Who is it? Who, where are, somebody out there is, I know it's you. Somebody out there. I'm glad we get to talk. You don't have to do that. Because the thing is, when you have sex with somebody who doesn't love you, you end up feeling so much worse. You end up feeling filthy. You end up feeling worse and worthless because you're giving of yourself. You're sinning against your body. And don't turn this off. You need to hear it. You don't have to do that. Please don't. You are not cheap. You are not a one night stand. You are royalty. You are, you, there's goodness that, that is on the inside of you that just needs to, you just need to wake that up. You need to let that live. You need to wake your dreams back up. Yes, in the midst of this pandemic, it's what we focus on. Whatever you focus on is going to be the biggest thing. If you're focusing on not having hope or focusing on looking at all this media stuff and these, these numbers that don't make sense or whatever it is, and you're focusing on so much death, that's what's going to be in your face. Oh, gosh, death. Oh, I know there is death. But sometimes you got to turn away from that so that you can live. Woman, you deserve better. Man, you deserve better. Trying to drink it away is not going to help. You need a drink of God. You need a drink of the Holy Ghost. (laughs) You need a drink of the Spirit of God. And the best thing about that is you don't get a hangover afterwards. You don't feel like throwing up afterwards. You feel great. Have I ever had a hangover? No. But I see what it does to people. It's just a quick fix. Better to turn it over to the Lord. Better to give it to God. Why? Because you're worth it. You're worth not not giving up your body to someone who's just using it for moments of temporary pleasure. And then they throw you away. You don't need that. And I'm talking to men and women alike. You don't need that. You don't. 
you don't need to try, you know, go through having a baby out of wedlock. Don't know. You don't. You need to change your focus. Think about some of the dreams when you were a child. What did you want to do? I know that's not one of them. I don't think there was ever a child who said, I want to grow up and just give my body away to people who don't love me. No. That's not it. What was it? I want to sing. I want to dance. I want to, I want to be a police officer. What, what was it? What was it? What can you do now? What take take all of that? Take all that that I don't even like to use use the word energy, but take take that not not mystical energy, but take all of that energy that you have and put it in a in a better direction and think better about yourself. I remember I was in a relationship years ago and I knew that this guy was um I was with a few guys that were a bit flirtatious, but I knew that this one was, and I remember being um, in the church service, and I was sitting there, and I was so broken on the inside. I really just wanted to scream. And I heard this still, small voice. If you listen closely, you can hear what God is saying to you. He comes to bring life and not death to your life. He comes to build you up and not tear down. Yes, there are times when he will chastise you, but what parent doesn't chastise or talk to their child and say, listen, you shouldn't do that, don't do that. So God is like a parent. He will do that too. But it's like I heard, you are royalty. Don't settle for less. You are royalty, young lady, woman who in the sound of my voice, you are royalty. Don't settle for less. Man, young man, in the sound of my voice, you are royalty. Don't settle for less. Don't try to look for quick fixes and things like that. You deserve better. You deserve better. Have there been times in my life when I've settled? Absolutely. And that's when things just didn't go well. Don't settle. Settling is choosing to give up and say, I was to use, I'm going to do this anyway. It doesn't matter. It does matter. How many people do we see who chose not to give up, who are making it? Some of them are millionaires now. They were homeless, sleeping in cars, sleeping in hotels, whatever. Don't give up. It's what you think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He thinks it first, and then he becomes it. If your thoughts are negative, if they're depleting, if they're worthless, if they're beating you down, you've got to change your thoughts, lest you become your thoughts. You are not defeated. You just need to find the answer. I saw this poor barber the other day. You know, he went and he was still trying to do his work, and... He lost his, his license and he said he, he had, he's this grown man. I felt so sad. He's just trying to survive. What has the world come to? Is there a way that we can pivot in this season? Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you lost a loved one. Pivot. Pivot. Shift, change, look at it differently. Open your eyes and look differently. I'm still here, all is not lost. What can I do? And finding the answer sometimes, you're not going to find it by yourself. Sometimes you're just going to start to have to look and talk to people and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. I don't know what I can do. trying to find an answer. I don't know what it is. Keep looking. When it gets hard and even when it doesn't, God, I'm inviting you in. Have your way. Help me 
Wash me, cleanse me, cleanse my thoughts. My thoughts haven't been right. Forgive me. Keep asking for his forgiveness. Keep asking for him to, to, to give you his mindset, a mindset of faith. In the midst of adversity, a mindset that speaks peace in the midst of a storm. You can speak to yourself. You can encourage yourself. And when you want to lay there in the bed and don't get up because talk to yourself and say, get up. I will not lay here. I will not try to lay here and die. I will get up. I will live anyway. Regardless of who doesn't want me to exist. I was not created for them. I was not made for their glory. I was created for the glory of God. I was not created to be their puppet. I was created for the glory of God. Do something different. Get that dream back out. Write it down. Put it in front of you so you can see it. Start writing that book. I don't care if you don't know where to start. Start writing. Anyway, the rest will come. The format will come. Just write. And do the best that you can with what you have. Not like anyone else. Not trying to, what's the word? Compete. Do the best that you can do with what you have. Okay? And do not give up. A lot of people are facing some difficulties and hard times. Get help if you need it. Go to that food pantry. So you can feed you and your family. I know some of you are saying, I've never done that before. I don't want to do it. If you have to do it, do it until you find something better. Okay? From here until the next podcast and the rest of your life, choose life, not death. Choose to respect your body and yourself. Choose not to listen to the lies that people are saying about you or the lies that you're telling yourself. You are not worthless. You deserve to live just like everyone else. But you must depend on God. Get that Bible out that maybe has been on the shelf or just open it and read it more. Go online if you you want to hear it and get the Bible app and hit the audio button. And just let it play. Let it play in your house. Let some uplifting music play. You know how you go, you get down back in the day, our heart would be broken and we go turn on those sad love songs. No, don't do that. Do something else. You don't need to be in a sad space now. You need some love. You need laughter. You need God, not lust. You need love. That's it for today. Get the book. It's on Amazon. Like I said, if you want, um, me to write a message in there for you let me know um yeah I'll put up how you can get it but you can definitely go to the website and send an email or you can go on the Facebook platform and try to reach me through messenger if that works out better for you alright be encouraged today do something different that you haven't done something good for you Something good for your body. Exercise. Do a couple of jumping jacks. Jog in place. And then decide that you're going to live. That's one of the best things you can do. And decide you're going to live with God. Because living without him, that is not the answer. This is your podcast host. This is Yadita. Thank you for tuning in to Pep Talk with Yadita. You can follow me on, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> that always sounds so funny. Follow me. You can actually access some of my um, social media uh, information on uh, Facebook. It's at Yadita. Instagram, the same. Yadita Span. Uh, there are other podcasts on Spreaker. It's Real Talk with Yadita, Unapologetically Purple and Pep Talk. 
And the website, of course, is www.yaditaspan.com. Enjoy the rest of your day. You deserve it. And whatever you do, don't give up.